Great, it's recording. Hi, how are you? So, it's Iris Klaasson, and I have to say, I'm really sorry about the really poor quality uh, for the recording right now. I was going to record with my digital camera, I just bought it, and that was my plan, but it turns out I'm having a little bit of issues with the camera, so maybe the next video will be better. I am in beautiful Thailand right now. My sister is getting married in a few weeks, so I'm going to be here for about 18 days. And since I'm still going to continue working and blogging, but I wanted to do something a little bit special and I want to share the beautiful nature with me for those of you who are somewhere cold and dark like, you know, Scandinavia right now. So I'll be recording my stupid question of the day and the next videos will be much better quality and than this. So, but the first one, stupid question number 89. What is Hick's law and what is Fitt's law? Well, basically, I have to say, one of my favorite speakers is Billy Hollis. He's so good when it comes to especially user experience, and I've had a lot of good talks with him, and I had to attend his session at Eurodev this year. And he was talking about something called Hicks Law. I never heard of that before. Well, I am not a designer. I like colors, and I like, you know, combining and doing things like that. But I am not a professional designer, graphical designer, so I don't know too much about user experience other than the things I can kind of think out and you know, you make your own theories as you're programming. So he was talking about Hicks Law and I did some Google and I did some research on it because I wanted to learn more about it. So Hicks Law it states that the more options a user has to choose between, the longer time it's going to take for a user to actually select one of those options. So if you have a menu with like thousands and thousands of items and and they're all, you know, placed randomly and doesn't make any sense. It's going to take a longer time for a user to actually select one of those. And we want the user to experience the application as fast and easy to use. We're very impatient. We don't have so much time. So we want to make it easier for the user. We want to be efficient. So what you should do, uh, the way I've understood it, is make sure you only expose the options the user needs and has to have right then and there and rather have it kind of hierarchically so you kind of dive down into the application instead of just presenting everything at once like bleh, you have everything you know you know what I mean so and the options that you do present try to cat uh, have categories or tags or or something that groups them naturally even just uh, having them alphabetically because what happens if the user is looking for something that starts with C as soon as, as soon as he sees A he's going to skip the rest and sees B he's going to skip the rest when it comes to C and that's actually going to this actually going to increase um, no sorry decrease <laughs> the time it takes for a user to find what he's looking for and select it and the same goes with categories. If you're not looking for cars, you're going to skip the cars. And if you're not looking for houses, you're going to skip the houses. And so on. So what's up with Fitz Law? Then? Well, it also has something to do with the amount of time it takes a user to select something. And it basically says the, the further the distance uh, the user has to travel, not physically, you know, not like walking or running, but the mouse uh, pointer, the longer the distance and the smaller the area, uh, the longer time it's going to take for a user to select. Makes perfect sense? Yes, of course it does. Uh, but then you don't always really see this applied uh, in applications. So what it means that you want to have the commanding surface, the clickable surface where the user actually selects something, you want to have it close to where you expect the user to be. Sometimes you really don't know, but sometimes you can guess an estimate. If you have a scroll bar on the right hand side, you're going to kind of assume that the user is going to scroll the page and the mouse pointer will be at the end of the page on the right hand side. So you might want to have the OK and Cancel buttons there instead of up on the right left side, you know? And the same goes as for a commanding surface on a touch device. Uh, such as a uh, surface or an iPad or whatever. If you have a menu at the bottom, you want to have it within the, the pump area. So they're always ready to click and you don't have to travel like so or like so. Most users are pump users when it comes to tablets. And also the same if it's just a mobile phone. It, a lot of people will use the right hand, uh, right pump to select something. So you want to make sure they don't have to travel so far. And something they're very good at when it comes to mesh design, modern UI design, Windows 8 design, or whatever, whatever people ended up calling it. Oh god, that term. Well, when it comes to that design, what I really love about it, it's the simplicity. And it does seem to apply both Hicks Law and Fitz Law very well. 
Uh, in particular, I'm thinking about the whole padding thing. They've got like set guidelines for how much padding you should have and how large items should be. And you really should make sure that the clickable items, that they have some padding around it that is also clickable, and then some additional padding that is not clickable. But you want to make sure that even though the user doesn't have to travel so far, it's not that big that takes the longest time. It's the fine, the fine points, you know, where they're trying to select that, you know, they travel here and then they have to select that piece there. That's the bit that's going to take the longest time. Have you ever tried selecting a tiny, tiny link? that are too close to each other on a mobile application. I hate that. You know, you try to select with your thumb, you got a big thumb, big fat finger, try to push on a small link. So annoying. So what you want to do is you want to make it more user-friendly. So you make it an appropriate size. You don't want to make it so big it's kind of like offensive, like hello, <laughs> you know? So yeah, that's Higgs Law and Pitt's Law. And I am pretty sure a lot of us kind of knew this from before, but it's good to know there's actually a law or a theory, proven theory. And I hope this acts as a, as a good reminder. I sure needed a reminder, because I'm currently working on, on an application where I'm in charge of uh, the user interface and therefore also the user experience. So, if anything I said was wrong, because it might happen, I, this is not exactly my expert area, so if something is wrong or you have additional information, please, please share. But no complaints about the quality of the video. It's not my fault. So I'm going to go shopping now and have one hell of a day. I'll be back online later tonight. i got some code to write. This is very inspirational. I love being here. So talk to you soon. Take care. And hopefully I'll be able to upload this video. So bye.